Hello and welcome to Hashtag to PH Vote. Um, today we go to UNA, the United Nationalist Alliance, and I have the privilege to speak to a man um, I've seen through the years. Uh, he was a soldier, a rebel, a fugitive for many years, and he's been a senator for three terms. If he wins this time around, it will be his fourth term in the Senate. We're join joining us today is uh, Senator uh, Greg Onasan, Gringo Onasan. Um, welcome to PH Vote. <laughs> Thank you, Maria, and it's a privilege. It's a, it's a joy. I'm looking <laughs> forward to this. Guys, if you have questions, tweet them. Use hashtag PHVote, um, tagrappler.com. And I'm going to start with Greg. What, what's important about these elections? It's all about our children. Uh, I've tried to piece together, Maria, everything I've done in my life. Uh, 17 years as a soldier, seven years as a rebel, including fugitive underground, and now 15 years as a senator. It's all about the children and about the poor. I'm a grandson of a fisherman, the son of a soldier. So this election is going to be about what we will be doing for the next generation of citizens and leaders. Everything I've done is, was designed. I, I discovered that after 65 years. Make them smarter, healthier, stronger, yes. happier, and safer. So that by the time, when the time comes when we're not around to yes. guide them or be at their side, they'll be competitive with the Singaporeans, the Germans, the Americans, the Chinese of their generation. When you were younger, you went, you cared enough to put your life on the line and, and fight. Um, was it worth it? Ah, oh, yes, yes, no, no lessons. Regrets. What about lessons learned? Are well, there more effective ways? Now that things. I have been exposed to uh, basic constitutional principles like right to life, my only regret is the loss to lives. I think that should be the third concern uh, as an issue, if it will be indeed an issue in the coming and future elections. Interesting. This is a tough time to be a politician with technology around, a new generation, many of them don't know, weren't alive when we were, when we were starting. Um, how, do you, how do you campaign in these times? How do you reach these voters? Maria, let's put that in perspective. It's a tough time to be politicians. It's yes. tougher to be among the 50% who are poor, okay. among our people. That should resonate even during the campaign period and beyond. So what makes this generation of voters different? I mean, you've gone through different Senate runs. Are you going to be campaigning differently? I think because basically the medium has changed. Uh, we should start projecting beyond the now. We seem to have a clear sense of uh, where we have been, but where we want to go has to be reflected in our political, national, and social life. And uh, I think uh, this has to be conveyed at all cost, not only to the electorate, but to every single Filipino citizen, especially our young people. So you, you actually talked about the most important things. Now, as a senator, what, what did you focus on in your last, what are you focusing on in your last term? What problems need to be solved? <coughs> Let's uh, do it in both strokes. Yes. From clean air to clean water to solid waste management to the comprehensive agrarian reform program to the National Security Act to the fire code, to uh, uh, separating illegal possession of firearms and explosives, to the land use, to freedom of information. Uh, let me catch my breath. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that was the focus of my legislative agenda, which I I'm past making promises. Yes. Uh, Maria, no? I just want to exercising the natural oversight function of Congress and the Senate I just want to look at the laws I have helped pass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, continue to help pass, and I want to oversee this uh, beyond uh, May, if, if you, given a chance. If you go through key moments of, of events you've lived through, I mean, in many ways, the history of the Philippines also you were, can be seen through your eyes. Key moments that, that affected the, this country, which if you were to choose three, what would you choose? The insurgency, martial law, and EDSA 1986. That's All 27 years ago. opportunities. Oh, interesting. I, I've been talking to a lot of people and they yes. say, 
uh, we, we Filipinos seem, we never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. What do you mean by that? Every time we change our leaders in the streets to raw unadulterated people power or through elections, after installing them, we go home. After a little uh, a bout of drinking, we celebrate, euphoric, we forget that what we went through was the easy part. The more difficult part is the task of nation building, where the minimum uh, requirement is sacrifice. The 99% perspiration it, 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 part, right? Yes. You know, we talk about beautiful speeches, re-engineering the system. Yes. But it's precisely the system that bred this corruption and inefficiency and political acoustics and noise that brought us to where we are now. Second, Maria, I refuse to uh, accept the thesis that all the problems we are confronting now were invented by previous administrations. This is the cumulative effect of years of lack of vision, mismanagement. You know, we, we are a nation at war with each other, according to <laughs> Secretary Almonte. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, it's about time we bury this culture of anger, hatred, and vindictiveness without sacrificing uh, justice. Mm -hmm. Case in point. Can you imagine, Maria, we have not even decided when or where to bury f the body of former President Marcos. Can you imagine the political weight yes. that that connotes? That, that's just an example of... Uh, how can we move forward faster yeah. with so much political weight? You actually have spent more time now working within the system than trying to break it apart. Any frustrations working within the system? Always. Every minute, every day. But the tools at my disposal are now what I would have wanted my tools to have been one generation ago. Legal, constitutional, peaceful. Uh, I don't bash myself. Yes. I was a soldier. My training was management of violence. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking forward, Maria, I, uh, nobody said it would be easy. When you said it's time to change this, how do you change it? It seems bred into the, the value system, the political parties. The, it, it's bred into the system. How do you change it? And you have been trying to change it. What levels of success have you had? Maria, let's talk about... Uh, Technically, education. Okay. Education is the only response or solution yes. to many, if not most, of our problems. Uh, we told Secretary Brother Armin Luistro, K-12 is good. Uh, I, I'm going technical here, no? Yes, yes. But it's more basic than that. Until we intervene, or unless we intervene, through nutrition between the ages of zero to six, it's going to be a case of underdeveloped minds and underdeveloped bodies that has to be integrated very tightly into our educational system. We're talking here about our most precious, strategic, and renewable resource. Yes. That has to be the perspective. There's no way we can go around it. So you're really taking a long-term view. But politics is about short-term, actually short-term hits, victories. What, what are those for you? These are quick fixes. The job, the duty of a leader is not to give the people what they want, but to teach them what they should want, what they should, what they should continue to dream about, to aspire for. And that is a function of not only the education that we get within the formal system, within the four walls of the classroom, but education through living example. We have to bridge this gap between the rhetoric and the practice, and that has to come from our national leaders at the highest levels of governance. I actually agree with you. What's the difference? Is there any difference between Team Pinoy and UNA? Uh, Maria, uh, it has been a source of you know, frustration for me that I, I continue to be an independent uh, candidate. I was privileged to be accepted into the UNA with the prayer and hope that this will lead us through charter change to back to a two-party system, which is program-based. Yes. No? Platform-based, not personality-driven, not transactional, not market-driven. Uh, that is my dream and my hope. I, I hope it happens within my, my lifetime. How far away are we from that, a true political uh, party system? I'll redo my computations. <laughs> but you agree there isn't really a political party system to There is no of. political party existing. Yeah. The only party, to my mind, that resonates with consistent pro-poor programs is Bayan Muna. The left. But, it, but yes. it's a case of, you know, sayang. Yes. No, right message, wrong messenger. 
too, too much red in the landscape. Interesting. Well, you've dealt, you know, you've dealt with insurgencies, and we're coming up to the anniversary of the Jabida massacre, March 18, 1968. I mean, you were a lieutenant at that time. What did you know about it? I'm, I just want to focus on this for a little bit because it's in the news and it's still ongoing. I and many others, both on the rebel side and the government side, especially among civilians, were victims of that war. We, we fought in the 20 years after that, that bungled project. And it's, I'm afraid, I, I hope, we, we manage the situation properly so that does not happen again. How do you think the government has handled it so far? Mixed signals. We ask them to come home and threaten them with a, uh, a case, no? uh, yes. file charges against yes. them. Uh, it has now metamorphosed into se two separate issues, uh, Maria the live legitimate claim to Saba yes. and the welfare of 800,000 Filipinos in Saba, which, by the way, we should account for. Mm -hmm. It's a duty, it's a moral responsibility, and potentially the 20 million Filipinos in Mindanao. How should this be resolved now? Third party. China is watching. Yes. Because China was a proponent of, the, of a bilateral situation, no? yes. a response. Yes to the southern, uh, to the western Philippine Sea, Correct. Scarborough Shoals issue. Yes. This is another case in point. No? We cannot allow it to remain as a bilateral issue between us and Malaysia. No? This has to be resolved by the United Nations, yes. ASEAN, International Red Cross, Amnesty International, or all of the above. Okay. So that we can account for the 800,000 Filipinos. Where are they? Yes. How are they? And uh, most of them, by the way, Maria, if not all of them, are poor, just like the Sultan of Sulu. Th this could have an impact on the Bang Samoro Framework Agreement because Malaysia is a, is a major part of that, right? Um, what Do you see any potential backlash of this event now? Maria, this should be a function of a clear foreign policy and a clear national security policy and collaterally a clearer economic policy, not only for Mindanao, yes. but for the rest of the country and the region. Our audience here is not Malaysia or any third party, it's the global community. Fantastic. I am getting many questions now from social media. Thank you guys for sending them. Uh, they're obviously listening from at Kokoy. Uh, he's a blogger. He said, Dear Senator Onasan, whose fault are those missed opportunities? You talked about the three of them. And then he puts in the adventurers who destabilized the growing economy. Whose fault were those missed opportunities? It's our collective fault as a people. The leaders we elected or installed. Uh, I will accept responsibility mm -hmm. uh, for everything I have done. But I want others who must be held accountable to be beside me. So you're saying you did make mistakes? Oh, yes. Uh, in fact, I regret the loss of lives, no? Yes. Uh, okay, let's go to the numbers. Yes. 150 in the 87 uprising, 300 in the 89 uprising. 89, yeah. What about the 8,000 Filipinos who died in two hours because some wonderful public official allowed the denudation of the forest above Ormok? Ormok. I remember later. What about the thousands or hundreds of thousands of Filipino families whose parents lost jobs and resulted in the 80 to 100 Filipino children dying every day, Maria, of malnutrition or malnutrition-related causes. Mm. So uh, I want uh, for consistency. So really, you're still pointing, it's a governance issue, it's being consistent in policies uh, and that... Consistency, predictability, political unity, long-term peace, which of course should result in economic prosperity.